here's an interesting tidbit from the psychological literature. Let's say you want to determine what the best predictors are for lifetime success in a Western society. Well, what would you hope for? How about intelligence? There would be a good one. Let's hope the smart people occupy more positions of complexity. Right, because they're smarter. Would you want it any other way? Okay, and, then so, and that's great. The number one predictor of accomplishment in Western societies is intelligence. So that means the system works. What's the number two predictor? Conscientiousness. Well, what's that? It's a trait marker for hard work. So who, who gets ahead? Smart people who work hard. Now, that doesn't account for every bit of the difference between people in terms of their hierarchical structure because hierarchies aren't perfect, they're corrupt. People get to the top sometimes because they're psychopathic, although, believe me, a hell of a lot less than you think. Because a psychopath has to keep moving from place to place because once he reveals himself as deceitful and untrustworthy, he has to go find new suckers to fleece. So the idea that, you know, there's no distinction between a CEO and a psychopath, it's like, that's only made by someone who A, knows nothing about psychopaths, B, knows nothing about CEOs, and C, has something fundamental against the entire capitalist structure. Because it's simply not true. Corrupt, sometimes. Greedy, sometimes. Short-sighted, sometimes running companies that are doing their best to auger themselves into the ground, and so, you know, it's bad people running a dying organization. But generally speaking, it's not the case. Our hierarchies of competence are reasonably functional. And not only are they functional, they're valuable. We need to know who the competent people are, and we need to reward them. And even more importantly, we need to tell young people, hey, there's some hierarchies of competence out there. Like, a thousand of them. Go be a plumber, man. But be a good one, you know? Be an honest one. Be... I had a plumber once, you know? <laughs> it, was the night, it was the night before we were putting drywall in our house. We were redoing a house, and he had put in all the plastic piping, you know? And I was going to test the joints. They're supposed to be glued together with this pipe glue, right? And I said, oh, I told him I had to test the joints. And he said, well, you don't have to test my joints. They never leak. And I thought, yeah, that's okay. How about if I test them? So I went up on the third floor and filled the pipes with water, capping them in the basement like you're supposed to. And like half an hour later, I had two inches of water in the basement. There were 30 leaking joints. And that was the night before the drywallers were supposed to show up. So... Well, so, he wasn't particularly competent, that's the point of that story. But even more so, he had put a bunch of the plastic pipe outside where the drywall would be, so it would have been sticking through the wall. So I spent a frenetic night, you know, sawing through plastic pipe and re-gluing joints so that my, well, so that the drywallers could come in. What's the point? If you're going to be a plumber, man, be a good plumber. Because otherwise all you do is go out there and cause trouble. We don't need people to cause more trouble. We need people to solve problems. You know, and so you can be a tradesman and you can be, you can make a lot of money as a tradesperson. It's a bloody, reliable, honorable, uh, forthright, productive way of making a living. And there is a hell of a lot of difference between a working man who knows what he's doing and one who doesn't, both in terms of skill and ethics, right? And you work with someone who knows what they're doing, it's a bloody pleasure. They tell you what they're going to do, they tell you how much it will cost, they go and do it, it works, and you pay them. Perfect. Everyone's happy. And that's what happens when you have genuine hierarchies of competence. And so you, to, you listen to these panderers of egalitarianism, egalitarianism and equity, and they fail to recognize completely that there are differences in rank between people. It's not such a terrible thing, man. Maybe you wouldn't be a great lawyer. Like, it's certainly possible. Most people aren't. But that doesn't mean there isn't something you could be great at. There's lots of hierarchies to attempt to climb, and if you fail in one, go try in another. But the point is, you're still trying to aim for the top, and what the hell are you going to do if you don't try to aim for the top? You know, flap about uselessly and whine about your life? It's not helpful. It'll just make you miserable. You're not reliable to anyone. You can't help out in a crisis. It's like, so you tell young people, and this is another message for conservatives, like, I don't care what you're going to do, but go out there and make something of yourself. Be an honest person and work and get to the top of whatever it is that you want to get to the top of. You know, and... And, and, and stand up for yourself like a respectable human being and be a bit of a light on the world instead of a blight, you know? And you can tell young people that and they haven't been told that by anyone now. And so the young men are so hungry for that that it's, it's painful to watch. They're so relieved when fi someone finally comes up and says, hey, you know, you, you get your act together a bit, 
Discipline yourself, see if you can learn to tell the truth, concentrate on something for a year or two, you could be a bloody world beater. They think, really? That's possible? Wow, that would be, that would be interesting. That might make life, wor life worth living. It's like, yeah, it might, so why don't you go do it? That's what the damn universities were supposed to be teaching people, and they've forgotten that. It's like, get yourself educated, man. Read some books, learn to talk, learn to think. Make yourself into something. Get the hell out there and make the world that put you here happy that you were put there. So hierarchies are, of competence are desirable and they should be promoted. So none of this idiot egalitarian equity. It's not good for anyone. First of all, it's impossible. Second, it would be murderous to impose. But third, even if it succeeded, it would fail. As fast as it succeeded, that would be how fast it would fail. Why would you strive for anything if there was no up to strive for? If everything's flat and equal, well, when you're starving or dying, then everyone's equal. And believe me, the egalitarian, the egalitarian totalitarians who dominated the 20th century knew perfectly well how to make people equal. And they made them equal in gulag work camps and in starvation. And I'm sure we could attain that if we wanted to. Borders are reasonable. How about that? The law is the border that stops someone from stealing your laptop. And if it's an Apple laptop, well, it's the sort of laptop that a social justice warrior would carry. <laughs> and then the social justice warrior is going to be very irritated if you happen to purloin their laptop. And then you might point out to them, you know, it's a border that protects you from having that thing taken. And they say, well, the border should be open. It's okay, man, no problem. You hand over that laptop right now. And everything else you own, too. If you don't like borders, and you can get rid of the damn walls in your house, and you don't need doors on your bedroom either, and we can keep an eye on you whenever we want. And so much for borders. One of the things that really differs between liberals and conservatives, between the left and the right, is the right, is in, the right likes tight borders between things. It's part of being conscientious at every level, conceptually, sexually, familially, provincially, nationally. The right says, look, let's keep, let's keep the borders between things pretty distinct. And the left says, yeah, maybe not because some of those borders are in the wrong place and a little bit more free flow of information wouldn't be a bad thing. And the thing is, they're right, but so are the conservatives. And that's why you have to talk. It's like, well, we've got some borders. That's a good thing. Maybe some of them need to be moved around a little bit, and that's what the political dialogue is for. But that doesn't mean that borders themselves are a bad idea. They're a great idea, because without borders, everything mashes into the same untenable state of undifferentiated chaos, and you can't live in that. And so the people who are trying to tear down the borders conceptually, politically, and practically, what they want is the chaos that that would bring. They either want that or they're too foolish to know that their pursuits will produce that. 